Hey guys, Norchetto here. Thanks for stopping back in. So uh, pretty big news over the weekend. We had our roster announced. We had a full roster reveal video put out by the official Atlanta Rain YouTube channel, which is now live. Definitely go subscribe to them. Um, and yeah, it, it's so well done. So well done. Self-aware. Uh, definitely featured everyone wonderfully. Got to, We got to see some new skins. Um, and I'm going to get into all that. Uh, but I definitely wanted to go over the um, the players first and who, you know, who was announced. I know that this is uh, these are some names that we've talked about before, but definitely worth going back over. I want to start with our support line, uh, starting with Kodak, who is a German player. He was playing on the German Worlds team and they, they didn't make it to BlizzCon, but he was absolutely popping off um, at the uh, versus. Uh, some of the other players during the the uh, qualifier um, we have uh, Mesa who is a Finnish player formerly of Team Giganti and uh, his Mesa's video in the the announcement trailer was absolutely insane the uh, the, the clip of him on Eichenwald it really really funny um, moving on to our tank line we have uh, Popo and Deco from Element Mystic uh, which is a Korean contenders team, and we have Gator from Goats out of out of the North American contenders. Now, Popo and Deco are um, highly cons highly talented, highly considered one of the uh, uh, best tank lines in the world right now, and that's going to be really important going up against teams that had a lot of chance in season one to really synergize and, and um, get to know each other and how each other played. To have this this super strong um, tank line come in and already know how each other operates is going to be uh, going to really, really help us going into season two. Um, add to that Gator, who is, you know, big brain Gator, I, one of the guys who helped come up with uh, um, the GOATS comp that, that absolutely destroyed people. Uh, and um, I, I hear he is he's absolutely stunning when it comes to shot calling and, and kind of controlling a team, controlling team fights. So add that in and we have a ton of experience, intelligence, and flexibility on our tank line, and the tank line is the anchor of the team. Like I'm, I'm freaking out at our tank line right now. I know a lot of people are looking at our DPS, but th this tank line is insane. Uh, moving on to our DPS, we have Inlayer uh, from last night's leftovers. He's a Russian player uh, and is is nuts on on hit scan. Um, he's he's a fantastic Widow player, so keep an eye out for him. Uh, we have Erster, who is a South Korean player who is playing on Lucky Future Zenith, which is a Chinese contenders team. So um, not only does he have a really deep hero pool and can flex around a lot, he's probably going to be our, our projectile player based on who the other DPS uh, players are, but there's a lot of flexibility there, a whole lot of flexibility. Um, but he's also played for uh, Chinese in the Chinese uh, contender scene, which with three new Chinese teams being introduced, a total of four, that's going to be that's going to be a lot of, of potential knowledge that he he knows about Chinese organizations that we could we could build off of and really take advantage of. So I'm really excited there, not only for the in-game uh, in-game play, but the the out-of-game intelligence and knowledge. And then uh, and then yes, it is official. We do have Defran. Defran was signed, and and, and an absolutely hilarious. Uh, um, twist on the announcement video. It, it kind of cuts to black, and then uh, you hear Defran come on, and it, it was it was um, a clip from his stream where he was teasing his chat about, you know, do you guys really think I would join the league? Do you really think I'd do that? And here he is. He's he's been announced. So. Um, uh, yeah, Defran is. I mean, what, what's there to say? He's formerly of uh, Team Selfless. He's considered to be one of the most gifted, mechanic, mechanically gifted players in the game. Uh, he's had a little bit of trouble in the past, but from what I've heard this year, especially, he has done a ton of work on himself and is in a, in a much better place, much happier player. So I'm I'm really happy for him there. And you know, I I'm not really concerned going into season two. A lot of people reference players like XQC, but you know. It's really unfair to compare the two. I really don't see someone like Defran holding, you know, holding grudges or just speaking without kind of thinking through what he's saying and and, and just kind of going off on people. I don't see that happening. So any of the um, any of the the questionable history that I see there has been really just kind of put to rest because of, of how he's been acting and how much he's worked on himself this year. So I, I don't really see a problem there. Uh, I just see him as a, a potential to be a huge playmaker on the team. Now, um, even Defran said, and, and you know, I agree with him here, that he will probably be benched behind in lair, uh, at, at least at the beginning. I see this kind of being like a, a pine situation with the New York Excelsior where he's kind of subbed in on certain maps to kind of pop off. But um, even Defran said that he thinks Inlayer is in a better place. He understands um, pr the pro level right now a lot better than uh, 
um, someone like the friend who's been primarily just streaming and playing on ladder. It's going to take a little bit of time to get acclimated not only into the uh, competitive scene, but the the Overwatch League level of the scene. Even players like uh, I know Carpe, who's considered to be one of the best players in the world, uh, said it took him a few weeks to really kind of get a feel for for the league play, uh, the Overwatch League play. So so yeah, maybe not. Don't expect him to be just like the the superstar of the team straight from the get go. Um, you know, no one's going to be able to come in and completely carry the team. This is going to be something that the entire team has to work on to to win games and really develop themselves and develop a, a good synergy to take season two. But good God, guys, this this list of players looks amazing. This looks so good. Um, and don't just take my word for it. I uh, There is an article that I will put in the description by uh, Andrew Rush, uh, otherwise known as ZP. And for those who don't know, ZP is very big in the uh, Overwatch scene. He has been a, a force in contenders. Uh, he casted with Jake at the World Cup qualifiers, and a lot of people are hoping for him to um, be brought up to Overwatch League in Season 2 as either a caster, an analyst, or something. So just some kind of involvement, because he's he's very involved, very intelligent, a lot of game knowledge. But he wrote a, uh, an article about um, the Atlanta team and his thoughts on the strength of the team. And there's a lot of good stuff here. He he kind of, you know, I've echoed a lot of stuff that he said about the strength of the tank line and the tank line being the, the anchor of the team and uh, just things about that those tanks being able to make space for our DPS. And if that can happen, our DPS is in a place to really go nuts. Um, but what I um, what I really wanted to highlight out of this is a, uh, a little bit of information about Sefi, about our coach. And um, one of the things is, uh, he said, one of his core strengths as a coach has been his ability to not only find talent, but also to create an environment in which players can develop and be successful. So as we know, in season one, there was a lot of problems with uh, team mismanagement and really um, not treating the team well, um, cramped spaces, not providing them uh, ample rest, things like that. Um, and, and this is something that, you know, I was a little bit concerned about, but I wanted to touch on another part of this article before I get more into that. And that's, that's, uh, Sefi saying about the, um, roster construction that it spanned two months, including global tryouts and drew upon the wisdom of many staff and volunteers conducting literally hundreds of hours of VOD review. We had a clear vision the whole way through and our management made bold moves to recruit once we had the names. I've been in esports a very long time, but personally have never been part of something so thorough as this. And we're just getting started. So that is that makes me so optimistic and pumped about about the amount of care that the the team management is putting into this. If they're putting that much time and effort into it, and even someone like Sefi, who has such a strong history in not only Overwatch and in professional Overwatch, but he's literally coached an Overwatch League team, and for him to say something like this, that makes me incredibly excited about how much time and care is being put into this team. Um, I've heard there's already been uh, um, talks about a, a nice team house. Uh, I've heard there's even been talks about getting on a, a, a team chef, which like that, that just I'm really, really happy for the players that um, this organization is, is looking to take care of them so well. Uh, I'd like to see some information maybe about a um, maybe a personal trainer and a sports psychologist or something like that. Uh, keep the body and mind healthy as well. But, you know, if, the, if that's needed, I have no doubt based on all this information that the team would would absolutely be willing to do something like that. They really care about these players and they understand that it takes more than just, you know, 12 hours of practice a day, every day to, to win, um, to win in, in this league. So I'm really excited there. Um, going back to the video though, uh, something else that we were able to get from the video were, uh, was a peek at some skins. So we had had, um, uh, Zarya and Lucio released with, uh, or revealed with the branding. So we got to see them. But one good part about this video is we got to see, um, uh, the skin of each of our players kind of specialist hero featured as well. So on top of Zarya and Lucio, we now have a peek at soldier 76, Reinhardt, <laughs> Reinhardt, uh, Genji, Diva, Winston, Widowmaker, and Zenyatta. And they look so good. They look so good. Um, Toronto can keep the red and black for all I'm concerned. I love this kind of light gray and charcoal look that we have going. I think it, I think I've said the, the term sleeker before. It, it just seems less oppressive than that, than that red and black. And, and I really, really like the direction, um, that, that they've gone with the skin designs here. They look so good to me. Um, so moving on from that, you know, what's next? What else comes from, uh, um, 
between now and the start of the league? Where where do we go from here? What is there to look forward to? And basically, I, I see three major things um, and a few maybe speculative things. The three major things: one is obviously going to be more fan engagement from um, from the social media accounts and uh, JP, you know, killing it out there. Uh, another one is going to be. Um, player involvement so now that we have these announcements i would hope to see you know maybe some more streams from the players with uh, flying under that atlanta flag and really being able to talk to and um uh, kind of get involved with the community and their fans. Uh, I I know the fans probably going to be streaming more, uh, and I did see that uh, um, Inlayer and uh, Mesa immediately kind of started streaming after the announcement yesterday, which was really neat to be able to pop in and just say, "Hey guys, congratulations!" You know, which if you see them streaming, if you see any of the players streaming, definitely pop in and and, and give them a congratulations. They they completely deserve it for getting through this. If the trials on the team were this rigorous and took that long, you know that the guys who actually got signed to the team uh, absolutely deserve that spot. Uh, and besides that, I'd say the other major thing to look forward to is the potential reveal of an academy team. Now, I don't know if this is coming anytime soon, but w especially with the news we've been hearing in the last few days about, um, you know, the condition and, and what's going to happen with Contender Season 3, uh, for uh, Overwatch League teams to have academy teams and contenders is is super beneficial as far as recruiting and and really um, growing fresh talent and having those exclusive windows to pull those people up as well as things like two-way contracts so they can have players you know training and, and playing in a competitive environment uh, in the contenders team and then actually still be able to come up and play on the main stage in, in the Overwatch League. Um, there's no there's no leaks or anything. Uh, the only real evidence that we have that links our team to contender teams at all, really, one is going to be uh, JP, um, uh, Justin Patrie is the, the owner of the Sky Foxes, but that's really the only connection with that team. Um, we also have a few players that have come over from last night's leftovers, uh, or we had we had Inlayer come over, and then um, Sefi and Silence were both coaches on that or in that organization, so they got to come over. Which that that doesn't really mean anything. The only bit of I guess evidence or speculation that I would want to kind of raise an eyebrow at would be that um, at the Beat Invitational a couple weeks ago, Gator was actually seen playing for last night's leftovers. Now uh, we talked about how he formerly was a Goats player, had never really played with LNL and he just kind of popped up as one of their tanks that could mean something like a two-way contract but it could also mean that you know he got signed and has been working very closely with um, uh, people uh, close to the organization and maybe he got signed on as a sub who knows but it's definitely something that kind of um, uh, causes causes pause uh, Ajax who is one of the I believe is one of the owners of last night's leftovers now um, I tweeted out saying that he, he was like, I, I guess I'll have to say goodbye to Gator now that he's been signed to Atlanta Rain. And those words, those words, I guess, they stick with me. I need to get like an actual conspiracy hat to put on when I talk about this stuff. Um, but yeah, it's it's um, it's just speculation at this point, but it's it's something to look forward to and something to be talking about. Just And, uh, and at the very least, it'll get us watching um, contenders, which... Uh, you know, the contenders teams absolutely deserve as many viewers as they can get and as many eyes as they can get. So get out there, support your contenders teams. Um, and yeah, that that's pretty much it, guys. The, the only other thing I wanted to cover uh, actually goes back to the video, and it was uh, um, specifically about DeFran and how it was announced on his stream. Um, and it was just something that I wanted to call back to one more time to show the level of awareness and care that the organization has. And what happened for, for those that don't know, and I'll put a link uh, uh, down below for this part of his stream as well. But what ended up happening was he was streaming and he got finished with a match and did not queue back up. Someone asked him, you know, are you gonna keep playing? He's like, yeah, 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 we're gonna take a break for a second. And then he got a donation for $5,000 from uh, AEV Paul, Mr. Paul Hamilton. And, um, he it said let's go dude and had a link and defran just kind of lost it for a bit the, oh my god dude yeah 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 it's just so funny he's, he's a very funny guy and um he kind of toyed with his chat a little bit like should we watch it i don't know what this is Let, let's give this a watch uh even pausing it halfway through to kind of be like hey chat do you still want to watch this is this is this okay chat's flipping out talking about um you know i was there man i was there and um 
And then at the end, he's like, well, I guess that was it. And then there's the uh, the video uh, where it kind of debates us with the DeFran announcement. And uh, then he kind of loses it again when he himself is announced at the end of the video. And um, it's it's really funny. I definitely recommend if you, you have the time, go and watch it. And uh, definitely support all of our team's uh, uh, streams and, and any of their content. But but uh, yeah, guys, I'm I'm. I'm really happy with the way this roster announcement went down. Everything from um, uh, having the YouTube channel come out and, and put out a video. They didn't piecemeal everything. Everyone's there. It was very self-aware with the uh, the picture of DeFerrin as a kid and and having him be that kind of that kind of twist at the end of the video was was awareness of um, you know people wanting him announced and, and wondering whether or not he would be announced. Um, the 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 way it was announced on the stream just just. A lot of care has gone into this. A lot of care has been uh, put into picking the players. A lot of care has been into picking the organization, the staff. And um, yeah, they're they're showing that they have the chops to do this. And I think we can pull it out, guys. I'm really looking forward to season two. I'm looking forward to more news. And as soon as we get more news, you'll hear it from me. But uh, until then, I'll talk to you later, guys.